Good evening, and welcome to the um, Center Baptist service here on um, Facebook Live. It's our family devotion time. I'm going to give everybody a few chances to kind of um, log on and see. So I've started just a little bit early, um, but uh, a lot to pray for tonight, a lot to talk about. So um, I want to uh, hope you'll join in with us tonight. Uh, just for a little while here, it's a, a new normal. Um, we're all kind of getting used to different schedules. We're getting used to, uh, I don't say getting used to, I shouldn't get used to, but we're learning um, some things. And um, so all this is new. So thanks for logging in. I already see some folks. And I'm going to have prayer, and then we're going to I'm going to share some from God's Word. And then I want you to give an opportunity to comment if you've got a question, a prayer need. I'll do my best to notice that and um, kind of talk a little bit. Uh, but my family is with me. They did not want to be on camera tonight because they've done that a lot already. And uh, but just uh, there's Miss Courtney. Say hey, Miss Courtney. Hey. There's Miss Courtney. There's Michael out there. Say hey, Michael. Hey. 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 So we just uh, finished supper and uh, gathered around the table. That's one thing that's been um, a blessing, that we have gathered around the table and that we've been blessed with food and uh, very grateful for that. Um, just to kind of a few little housekeeping things for Center Baptist, let me kind of just remind you and say, number one, thank you, Center Baptist Church, for um, walking through this with us. Um, we're all in this together. Um, there's been a lot of changes was not easy. Um, you've probably learned already about the trout tournament. Um, that was not an easy decision for Mark or the deacons. The city of Helen kind of helped in making the decision for us because of <clears throat> their decision with permits. We certainly understand that. We want to keep everybody safe um, in this season. Uh, you may or may not have heard there is been a case in White County, and uh, we want to pray for that individual and just pray everybody stay safe. Um, that's why we got to be diligent to keep doing the things we're doing. It's not easy to isolate for this season, but if we can do that, then we'll make a difference in keeping everybody well. So it's just very, very important. Um, so keep that in mind as well. But I also want to say, Center Baptist Church, um, we love you and we miss you. Um, I miss seeing you. Last night, Courtney and I held a marriage class with Zoom, and we had some technical difficulties, still trying to figure all that out, but um, it was good to see faces. Um, but one of the things that's been kind of cool as I'm looking at my family is um, being able to um, connect with people online. And so I see um, Tracy and Eric are watching, Miss Loretta, uh, Dawn, the Adams family is here, Miss Cindy, good to see you. Uh, Miss Danny, Rowan says hello. So we are grateful for that. Um, that is awesome. The picture she showed um, online was uh, really precious from Sunday. And so I'll try to mention a few other folks as I see you coming along. But let me also mention, too, uh, Center Baptist Church. And for anybody, there is a lot of resources on our website. Uh, Charlie and Ben have been working overtime to really put some updates on there. Um, you'll be able to, um, if you'll go to the update page, you not only see our schedule for March, but you'll find resources to help you with Bible studies, articles. Um, there's some things from the declaration from the president um, that we're doing that still helps us. Um, I see there's Miss Allison, Matthew, Miss Brenda. Uh, see y'all, Jimmy and Brenda. Thank y'all for being on as well. And um, so we're all here together. There's Mark Forbay. The Forbays are here. And uh, so I'm trying to keep up. This is all new, this technology. I may get Michael to come over here and sit beside me. She says no. She is shaking her head right now. And uh, so she has already helped me. Um, good. There's George. The Petties are watching. Awesome. And um, but let me just mention a couple things, too, again, about the website. Please um, make sure that um, you go to the website. You'll find all kind of resources. You'll be able to also point people to the website because our sermons that we're doing online and services and videos, um, they're now from YouTube, and I want to say just a huge thank you uh, to Jeremy 
um, Adams, um, who has done a tremendous job of starting our YouTube channel. We have had a lot of views this week. And again, it's not about the views. It's about getting the message of hope and the gospel out there, and we're doing that. And so I see Miss Alina's where too. Sorry about that. There's Miss Sheila. Hey, Miss Sheila, glad that you're with us as well. And um, so many folks, my family doesn't like it when I do that because they kind of get lost um, in the uh, the mix because I kind of start um, lose focus some. So, uh, but anyway, uh, Miss Sandy, you've been faithful. Thank you for joining in with us again tonight. Also on our website, Center Baptist, can I just say thank you? Miss Marty has said that uh, we have already received offerings from folks. And I just want to say thank you very much um, for that. Thank you for your faithfulness in giving. There are some things that I want to be able to share with you in, in, in a few days, hopefully, where we can help some of our nurses with some masks, possibly. Also, I, I got in contact with Star Bridges again today. Some of you may know Big Daddies has shut down for a little while. A lot of those guys at the Hickey House, that's where they work. So I've talked to Star, what can we do? As they have needs, maybe we can bring groceries and things. So and if you have needs that you know of, please uh, don't hesitate to share with me about that. Um, and so I want to encourage you in that. And thank you for your giving because you're helping us to continue to minister uh, for our missionaries and missions and giving here locally and touching folks the way we are. And so you can also online give. So, Senator, I want to remind you of that. That's an option that you can do. And so I see also there's Miss Terry. God bless you, Miss Terry. You and Conrad and everybody, David and Jean, Miss Vicki Payne, God bless you. You've been faithful to join in with us and grateful for all of you. Um, I also just want to encourage you, church family, keep praying. Um, I've been talking some with our staff and with our deacons as we look to the future of what this looks like. We don't know how long um, this isolation period will be, but there's some things that, that's coming together, hopefully, that no matter what, we'll be able to continue this online, but possibly some other ways that we can still gather through Zoom, the possibility of maybe a drive-in service. Don't know yet. We're trying to work the details out about that, but be praying with me on that and um, so that we can uh, keep that uh, in front of us because we still want to be an encouragement. There may be some things that you're kind of wondering, man, why are we walking through this? Well, I did a Bible study this morning and talked some about suffering and trials, and I encourage you to go back, not because it's me, but go back on our YouTube channel. You can find it there or here on Facebook. And I encourage you because God really walked us through some things and we had a tremendous time doing that. But tonight I'm going to give you a portion of that. This is a devotional and I want to share some thoughts about trials. And then we're going to just have a time if you want to comment and ask a question or a prayer need. Um, and we'll just share a few little things that's going on in our life and you as well. So let's just begin by praying. Would you pray with me? Father, Thank you for this time. Thank you that we can log on together as a body of believers. We need to hear from you tonight. Speak to us in a powerful way. And we ask you, Father, to go with us and go before us. Pray tonight. Encourage our heart. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, if you want to take your Bibles, I've got my Bible. Courtney and Michael, they got their Bibles. I'm going to ask them to stand. No, I'm kidding. I'm not going to do that. Anyway. I'm getting that look. I wish you could see for my sweet wife right now. We um, we are isolating together and we are growing together as a family. And uh, we played. Uh, anyway, I, I need to move on. First Peter chapter one is where we're going to be tonight. First Peter chapter one. And I want you to join in with me as uh, we come together around God's word. Listen to what it says. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ to the temporary residents dispersed in Pontius. Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, Bithynia, chosen according to the foreknowledge of God, the Father, and set apart by the Spirit for obedience and for sprinkling with the blood of Jesus Christ. May grace and peace be multiplied to you. Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has given us a new birth and a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and an inheritance that is imperishable, uncorrupted and unfading kept in heaven for you. You're being protected by God's power through faith for a salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. You rejoice in this, though now for a short time you have had struggle in various trials. The King James says a heaviness in a manifold trials. So the genuineness of your faith, more valuable than gold, 
which perishes through refined by fire, may result in the praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. I want to talk to you for just a moment about the ministry of trials. Pray with me again. Father, speak to us through your word. Encourage our heart in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Miss Carol. I see you joining in there as well. God bless you for being with us tonight. In this passage, Peter is writing to a group of Christians who are struggling and who are suffering. They are going through a tremendous trial by fire. I see you, Miss Connie. God bless you. Good to see you all there. My family says I need to do my Bible study. Didn't mention everybody afterwards. But in this, he says a few unique things that I want to say at the beginning, and then we'll get into the trial that he talks about. He says the temporary residents dispersed. That word temporary, it literally means a stranger, someone that is in a place that is unfamiliar. I could not help but think about what we're walking through right now. These are unprecedented days. None of us have walked through, maybe those that, that have been with us through the times of the war days, possibly. Um, but, you know, for many of us in our generation have never seen anything like this, where the world stands still, where things change in an instant and are changing daily, where there is the fear and the threat of sickness and uh, the, the unknown and the things that are happening. And so because of that, we are scattered. Now, he says they're dispersed. It's like a farmer throwing seed. They were scattered because of persecution. We're scattered because of a virus. We can no longer right now in this season meet by the mandate of our leaders. And I want to say I, I understand that. We're trying to be safe. And well, I appreciate your patience in that church. Know that when the time comes, we will gather again together around the, uh, around the, as the body of Christ in the building. But I'm grateful. Even though we're scattered, we're still the body of Christ. These folks were scattered. They were still the body of Christ. But they were walking through a temporary time in their life. And it says, according to the foreknowledge of God, they were chosen by God, by the foreknowledge of God. We're walking through things now that we don't know what's happening. We don't know what tomorrow is going to hold. But the foreknowledge of God means he sees ahead. It's like the Macy Day Parade. If you were on ground level in front of Macy's, all you see is one float at a time. If you go to the top of that building, you can see the end of the parade from the beginning. God is higher than we are. And all he can see is in front of us. Or all we can see is in front of us, but he can see the whole thing. We're in 1 Peter, Miss Jean. 1 Peter, Miss Jean just asked what the scripture was. We're in 1 Peter chapter 1. Thank you for asking. But he talks about how that they were in the foreknowledge of God. And I love how the message puts this. Listen closely to the message. Peter, an apostle on assignment by Jesus, riding to the exile, scattered to the four winds. No one, not one is missing, not one forgotten. God the Father has his eye on each of you. I want you to know that. You may be feeling alone and isolated. You're, you're not because God's eye is on you. You have not been forgotten. And you have not been forsaken. You are not missing. God sees you right where you are. He goes on to talk about in that time of, of testing and trial. Listen how the message puts it. I know how great this makes you feel, even though you've had to put up with all kind of aggregation in the meantime. Pure gold in the fire comes out of it proved pure. Genuine faith put through this suffering comes out proved genuine. When Jesus wraps all this up, it's your faith, not your gold, that God will have on display as evidence of his victory. That's the trial that he's talking about. Peter zeroes in on the trials. He zeroes in on the things that you and I are facing even right now. It is unique how he talks about a trial. He uses that word. It speaks uh, of a, a time of, of walking through the problems that we're facing. Some things about trials I want to speak to you very quickly. Number one, trials meet needs. According to this passage, trials meet needs. The phrase, if need be, he, he says, you, you are, you rejoice in this, though now for a short time, though now, if need be, there is a need for every trial. There's not a single trial we've walked through that's been wasted. Don't waste this time. And what I mean by that is, I'm not talking about don't listen, enjoy your family, enjoy the rest. 
But don't miss the lessons that God's trying to teach you in this trial. Don't miss the moment. As I, as I kind of put some things down, we have to know that, that these trials meet needs. We don't always know what it is. We have to trust that God knows best. He's preparing this trial. We don't know the income or the outcome. We must trust him. Number two, trials are varied. Notice what he says. He said, you rejoice in this, though for a short time you have struggled in various trials. The King James says manifold. There's different trials. What you're going through, I may not be going. Now, we're all going through this thing together in the virus, but it's affecting us differently. It's affecting us all in different ways through what we have to do, what our job is, what our occupation is, how it affects our family, how it affects those around us. But also there's some of you going through things that's even aside from this trial. As I talked to my cousin today, he was walking through cancer treatment. Regardless of this virus, she's walking through that. Others have had heart surgeries and, and, and knee surgeries and things like that. Others have had financial difficulty that was even before the virus. We're walking through those various trials. Please understand, they are varied. They're not all the same, but it's the same God that we're walking with. Number, number three, trials are not easy. Can we just admit that? Trials aren't easy. Peter did not suggest that we take a careless attitude towards the trial and we minimize what we're walking through is not easy. It, it talks about the struggle or the suffering that through this time of the, of the struggle that the King James says suffering, it, it's the same word that speaks of Christ in the garden. I want to tell you something. If, if you're just real, there's been moments this virus and the, 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 the things that's walking with it, it is pressed heavy upon you. I, I want you to know what it has upon your pastor from time to time. As I think about the, the what the news says and the what people are walking through and the heaviness in my heart that I know you're experiencing too. So we must understand that trials are easy. These moments that he gives us, we don't deny that they're painful, but we must accept that there's difficult experiences in our life. It's okay to not put up a brave front and say, this is hard, this is scary, this is fearful, but it's not okay to live in that moment. So we can have those emotions because we're real. But it's not okay to live in that if we come to the Lord. Because here's, here's the final truth. Trials are controlled by God. <laughs> oh, we feel like things are out of control right now. And they seem like they are. But everything's happening under the control of Almighty God. Look what he says. He says, so that you know some faith more valuable than gold, which perishes though refined by fire. Guess who's controlling the fire? God is. I like what Agent Rogers says, and I, I, I put this down if I can find it here. And it says, He keeps his, when God permits his children to go through the furnace, He keeps his eye on the clock and his hand on the thermostat. When He allows us to go through the fire, please know that Job had to go through suffering, Abraham had to go through trials. The people of God throughout the Old Testament into the New Testament had to face trials. They're not easy, they're varied, and, and, and they, they are fearful at times. But here's the thing, they are controlled by God. He uses the, the goldsmith as he would take that gold ore, and he would that, that goldsmith would take that gold ore and begin to put it into the fire so the impurities would, would fall off so he could see his reflection in it. See, God's taking us through the fire to get that stuff out of us that doesn't need to be there. But here's what I want to show you. The Bible says they are manifold or various trials. I want you to go with me to 1 Peter chapter 4, and I want to show you something. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10. I want you to notice something right here. And here's what it says. Based on the gift each one has received, use it to serve others as good managers of the varied or manifold grace of God. Aren't you thankful for the grace of God? I mean, the grace of God is God doing for us what we can't do for ourselves. It is God at work in our life. It is God supernaturally moving in our life. It is God providing what we need. It is God moving in our life. And here's what Paul or Peter is saying. For every multicolored trial, there's a multicolored grace to match it. Stay with me. If the trial you're walking through feels like a blue Monday, there's a blue Monday grace. 
if the trial you're walking through and all of us is it seems like there's there's the 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 the, the, the blue of, of 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 depression and and as you get isolated maybe feeling alone there's a grace for that trial maybe a loved one that is sick there's a grace for that trial Maybe a financial difficulty, there's a grace for that trial. Hear, or hear me, please be encouraged in this. Yes, we'll go through trials. He's refining us. He, he's working some things out in our life. He's bringing it to a far more weight of glory. Because that's what he says, it's more precious than gold. Did you catch that? Our faith is more precious. He is trying our faith. Ladies and gentlemen, we got to be honest. We've been living with surface faith. What I mean by that, things have been okay. I can go to the grocery store and get what I want when I want. I can go out to eat if I need to. Not everybody does. I'm just saying I, I, I can go to work. I can go to school. We've been living with surface faith because we, we could pretty much operate without having deep, abiding, tested faith. But right now, our faith's been tested. And he says it's going through the fire. And the test, when it comes out, it's, it's purer than gold and more valuable than gold. Listen to what Adrian Archer said again. A faith that can't be tested can't be trusted. Our faith has been tested. Hang in there, child of God. There's a grace for the trial you're walking through. Stand in the promises of God. Allow him to overwhelm you with his grace. And you will come through this fire. But we've got to have the faith out the he three Hebrew children that said, when they said to Nebuchadnezzar, you can throw us in the fire and our God's able to deliver us. But if not, we will still not bow down. You hear that? That's a faith that's been tested. To God be the glory. He stepped in that fire and he delivered them out of the fire. Now, some didn't. Did you know no matter what else happens, we have a heavenly home waiting for us. When Peter says we are strangers and pilgrims, you know what he's saying? This world's not our home. This is, I've said it many times in these videos and I'm going to keep saying, I want to get in your heart. We got to think eternal. What God is doing is an eternal weight of glory. The ministry of trials. God's at work. God's moving. God's controlling. God's testing. But God gives a grace for every single trial. Let me pray for you tonight. Father, Help us tonight to lean into you. Thank you that there's a there's a grace for every trial. There's somebody listening tonight that's discouraged. They're worried. They're anxious. Maybe they know somebody that's sick with this. Maybe they're worried and anxious about the finances or, or what's going to happen in the future. Or maybe they feel alone and isolated. Maybe there's a, a financial difficulty because of their work, getting laid off, or there's business. And, and, and things are slowing down and or maybe God, there's just a, in their own heart, there's a struggle. Maybe there's a sickness they're walking through even before this virus. God, I just pray, would you match up every single grace that's needed for every single trial? And would you remind us that even though we're scattered, we're still the body of Christ. And even though we walk through trials, you control them. You've got a message in them, a, a, a ministry in it. And they're not easy, but you've given us grace for every one as we walk through our faith being tested by fire. Help us, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I see there's Miss Jean and George Petty, and I see um, Anna and Ryan. God bless you for joining in. Um, thank you for being there from uh, Panama City. I, I'm a thank you still is where y'all are at. Um, but... Um, Anybody got a question or a comment, you're welcome to post. I'll try to answer it best I can. Um, for our family, it's it's been a unique season um, that we're walking through. It's changing every day for Courtney. Um, she just realized today that she's going to be doing some online schooling. They're going to try to work that out. Michael, of course, is doing um, schooling and working. She had a meeting with the youth today through Zoom, and that was uh, fun just to hear how God worked in that. And so we're all kind of um, walking through. Um, I'm trying my best to do ministry in a different way, contacting folks, seeing the people I can. I'm not able to go to the hospital. I want you to be aware of that. If something happens, they're not letting pastors or anybody else really except for immediate family. And even then it's only one. 
So uh, please uh, keep that in mind. Uh, thank you, uh, Miss Carol. I see you there. God bless you. It's been so good to have you join in on these uh, videos and uh, just want to encourage you in that. Um, but we're also, you know, just having some fun too. Um, we've had moments now, they're having discussion now about something. What you don't see is what's fun about this. Let me give you the behind the scenes. So as I'm talking about something, they will comment about it together and they will kind of talk about, well, I can't believe you said that or why did you say that? And then even Sunday, I, I did something, you know, with them. Um, um, I can't remember exactly what it was I, I did and they're talking about it in the meantime. So we've had some, some fun with that. Um, but, um, they, they've been really helpful and, uh, we're trying to work together to figure out our new schedules and try not to kill each other in the process. Courtney goes a thumbs up on that one. Um, but we, uh, as a family, I want to encourage you, um, hey, have some time in your Bible. Um, you know, we're, we are walking through right now. We determined as a family, we would walk through the seven miracles of Christ in John. And so we've been doing that. Um, uh, we've just kind of picked some passages. I'm sorry. I'm trying to get the conversation from my family right now. No, got, got any questions? Y'all got any questions? Any questions that I can answer for the fam? Not for me. They've got questions, but no, not for me. Um, Miss Courtney, when I asked her last night, what were the lessons she had learned? She said to keep a well stocked craft room. And uh, so that's very, very important. And um, she said, um, can we stop by for the Big Green Egg curbside? That is in the works, Miss Pam. Um, we'll see what happens. There is a possibility that I might be cooking on the green, Big Green Egg, but it will not be posted online. So um, you will just have to find out and drive by as others did the other day. But I did have fun with that. So uh, we'll be cooking some on that, hopefully, Lord willing, um, if we're able to. So anybody got any questions or thoughts or anything we can pray? Remember, go to our website. You can you can um, go to the prayer request page, and those prayer requests come to me. Uh, message me here. Would love to talk with you. Uh, Center Baptist, please go to our website. Got all kind of information. Please keep that in mind. Um, rem remember, Sunday morning, we're right here at 1030. I want to tell you something that blessed me. Uh, um, uh, Frances, she shared with me um, that her and Joe, as they were getting ready for to watch, that she not only uh, got her Bible ready, but she got dressed as she's going to church, put her necklace on. That just really blessed me, uh, Miss Francis. If you get a chance to see this, um, that was a blessing. She made it a priority to me. This was really what church was like, and it wasn't just sitting on the computer, but she was going to church. So, can I encourage you? Uh, tell somebody. Log on um, Sunday morning at ten thirty. Um, do uh, the timer alarm and those kind of things and let us know what, what did I say wrong log on no uh, my family's laughing at me what did I say okay. nothing okay John's wanting to know anybody want to go fishing if not I have oh Connie's saying anybody want to go fishing with John if not I have to go um, <laughs> I, I, I don't know Connie we'll put it out there and see there might be somebody um, I, I guarantee you that I just think you and John will just have a blessing having that time together. Courtney goes, no, we, Courtney said, she, Courtney said somebody's going overboard if we get in a boat together. And there is a good, good chance for that. I, I'm not going to mention any names, but there was somebody this week that I called from our church to check on. Um, they said, hey, we are not going to um, uh, be able to worry about the um, virus, Pastor, hopefully. But murder might be in the works. So I don't know if that's going to be the case or not. But anyway, uh, please um, keep that in mind, too. I see Miss Connie's got the emoji there of the uh, kind of uh, surprised look there as she uh, getting ready to go fishing. Um, but uh, we've also um, been creative in things of trying to, you know, for, for our meal time. Courtney's been doing a great job with that. Um, we've got some projects in the work, Lord willing, to have some fun. But, hey, let's let's be reminded, too, this is a serious thing. I'm not making light of it. I promise you that because it is a serious time that we're in. But it's good to laugh. It's good to rejoice. It's good to gather together like this. But I'm telling you, I'm longing for the day. Would you pray this with me? I'm longing for the day that we can gather back together. And when that day comes. I pray that we couldn't contain the people who would come and say, I'm so glad that would be like David that said, I was glad when they said to me, let's go to the house of the Lord. 
Have we taken it for granted? I don't know. Maybe not, but I believe we have. Let's not. Uh, let's not lose the lessons that we've learned. Um, any, anybody else got a question? I think my family's no questions. Anything you want to hold up for me, Michael? And you, they're, they're passing notes back and forth. Um, there, there's a couple of things sometimes you just want to wonder. But no, really and truly, the truth of the matter is, um, you know, we're all doing really well. We're all doing really well. No, I'm kidding. I don't need help. But I just wanted to say, oh, they're, they're passing notes here. Well, I'm, she's getting me a note. Hold on a second. I'm finding out right here. Courtney's going to tell me some truth, and uh, and then we're gonna I'm gonna lay it out to you. She is sharing with me something, writing it down on a piece of paper. I could not get them to come on camera tonight. I want another chirp service, which means what? Oh, she wants to be. <laughs> She said, she said, <laughs> she said that she wants to go to another church service because this pastor is mean, making fun of, me. making fun of her. Um, it is difficult, as Michael said Sunday, when you are the pastor's daughter and wife and you have to sit right in front of, of me when I am preaching. She is definitely in the spit zone. <laughs> so um, but hopefully that, uh, Michael, any more notes or anything? You good? All right, church. Let me say again, I love you. I thank God for you. Uh, please, um, I have put all my information out on our emails. Please make sure and read those. I know that we're trying to minimize them so that all you're getting is mine uh, and from our staff as well. And so you'll be getting some of those. But please make sure and read those and uh, let folks know. If you're not getting them, please. Um, message me or do something, let me know so that we can get those to you. And uh, I want to encourage you in that. Again, you can message uh, Miss Connie. If there's anybody like to go fishing with John, you can let her know. Uh, but we appreciate everybody joining in tonight. And um, we just want to close out in prayer. Um, are here, but connection not staying. Gotcha. So here's the thing. If this goes in and out, once I'm finished, Jeremy will upload this later on to YouTube, and you can go to YouTube without any interruption. So make note of that. Um, if things are not, um, if it, it goes in and out because of your Wi-Fi or my Wi-Fi, know that you can go to YouTube. And I appreciate, again, Jeremy's work on that. Well, I just appreciate our staff. I appreciate our deacons. Um, they are working hard ministering. And if by chance, if, if you feel like we've missed somebody, would you please let me know? so that we can contact them and make sure everybody's doing okay. Again, we're praying. Keep praying for Mitchell Ferris. Um, he, as I um, talked to um, Jennifer this afternoon, I went over there yesterday, and um, it would appear that it's very close to God calling him home. And so you just pray for that family. And I talked to her this afternoon, and uh, he's still still kind of in the same position. So pray for them. And, again, other prayer needs. And I'll be posting some things, some different blogs, uh, some prayer times, um, and, and, and Bible studies along the way. And uh, so we look forward to that. But then, again, Sunday morning at 1030, um, keep that in mind as well, church. And, again, if the connections are in and out, please know you can go on YouTube later on and then go to, go to our website as well. I don't want to keep repeating myself, but I'm trying to get – because one of the things I'm so afraid of is we're not communicating enough. I want to make sure you're aware as best I can of what we're walking through um, because it's different. But we're going to make, listen, I said this to Marty tonight, and I mean it. We're going to go get to the other side of this. We're going to do it together, and I mean that with all my heart. Thank you, church, for being the church, and I just pray God would encourage your heart. So let me just mention, let me just call a couple things. Remember, to love the Lord and love your neighbor. Pray for folks. Pray for those in the health field. Pray for those that are out there on the front lines. Pray for our president. But also maybe send an email, send a text, send a note, send, uh, make a phone call. Uh, maybe something you can do, something small to uh, somebody out there. Maybe, you know, take something, just leave it on the porch or give them a card. Whatever it might be, look for a ways and you pray for the church as we try to do the same. Again, thank you for everybody that's logged on. Um, appreciate it so very much. Share this. 
Pray to be an encouragement to others. I'm going to close this out in a word of prayer. All right. Father, tonight, thank you for this time together with our church family and others. We lift up Mitchell to you tonight. Pray that you would touch him. We pray for all those that have been put on our prayer list that was sent out today. You know each and every need. We do lift up our president. We pray for our nation. We pray as we prayed the other night, Lord, with all of our heart, stay this plague. God in heaven, we ask. But in that time frame, sin revival. Sin re stir our hearts. Take us deeper in our faith, rooted in you, trusting in you, not just surface trust and surface faith, but deep abiding faith in you. That my trust is not in what others can do, but my trust is in you. And I thank you in Jesus name. Amen. Well, God bless each and every one of you. Uh, thank you, Miss Loretta. God bless you. We love you. Praying for y'all. Praying for Nancy. Thank y'all. We love you. As your pastor, I am humbled by your encouragement, by your uh, prayers. Thank you for being who you are, Center Baptist Church. I am one blessed pastor, and we are one blessed family. One final thing that you'll find a little humorous. So I wanted to be able to show my family because they're here with me and I wanted you to see them. And so I simply said, like it is on my phone, can I just, you know, flip the camera around? Mike and goes, well, daddy, is there a camera on the back? I guess not. I'm still learning how this thing goes. So that's why. But I can promise you they are not, not going to do it. Not going to do it. They're hiding under the table. Hey, we love you, church. God bless you. Have a good night. We'll talk to you soon. Amen.